Can you hear the birds chirping? It is part of my favorite springtime ritual. Every morning if the sun is shining, you'll find me out on the balcony, cup of coffee in hand, with a good book, and if the weather stays nice enough, even if I haven't showered, we might go for a walk to take in all the beauty around the neighborhood. So I'm all showered up and now I'm going to settle in even though the weather outside is so beautiful I'm really tempted to just spend the whole day outside but I really do want to make progress on my art and my art courses as well so I'm going to just cozy up on the sofa here I well I'm still in that immersion class I have quite a lot of weeks to go and actually tons of content from the previous week so what I'm going to start with I always do it in this order as I have my little iPad and I'm going to watch all the videos for one of the modules and only then am I actually gonna sit down at my desk and try to work through it that's just a way that I have figured I learn the very best is you know to have to see it first try to understand it in theory and then go into the practical part i know there's so many different ways to learn but i tried doing it like step by step as i was trying to also look at the screen and listen and it was just you know that didn't work for me i'm gonna kind of power through and really enjoy uh, lots and lots of hours of videos and then i'm going to try to get to the practical part But since that is not that exciting to watch, I thought I'd share a little clip here from when I went to the art store. Can you believe it? I went to an art store! And then, well, I was actually in Zurich uh, for an appointment. So then I just walked around the city a little and I wanted to share that with you too. Well, you might have guessed it. it is an entirely different day from when I first sat down and showed you that I was going to start looking at the module two and three videos. I finished watching module two and I'm about halfway through module three, but all that is still just in theory. And so today I'm going to take half the day here and really sit down and try to apply some of the new learnings. So drawing a chunky little smoothie <laughs> first. It's gonna be a really interesting day. Hopefully, yeah, just interesting. I might even grow. I think it's definitely going to push my creativity, but also my brain. One of my very favorite features of Adobe Illustrator that I'm working on here is creating color palettes. It's something I learned in the course and it's something that has brought me lots and lots of joy. Um, but yeah, right now you see I'm no longer working on colors. <laughs> I'm actually working on implementing the module that I had watched all those videos for. So it's unusual for this vlog to see me working at my computer, but a lot of this work is digital. Not entirely, not necessarily, but the bulk of it is. You are not going to believe this, or rather, I have disbelief. I just made my first Adobe Illustrator repeat pattern and it went so quickly. I can't believe I've actually checked that off my to-do list to learn. It's um, admittedly not in my usual art style. And I did that very purposefully because I wanted to do something that was a little quicker so I could learn the technical part. So this, I'm gonna show you, doesn't look like my regular art style. It's not done with watercolor. It's completely done digitally, but I have figured out how that works now. I've learned that through the immersion course. And so now that I know how it works technically, I'm really excited to go into one of the more complex parts, which is how to, well, like recreate my watercolor look digitally. And yeah, I think that's gonna be a challenge and I don't even know if I can get it to look the way that I want. So I don't know if I can use this program, but 
now I know how it works technically and I know I can do them digitally, that's already one big step forward. So yay, success. <laughs> Here it is guys. This is what my repeat pattern looks like. So on the right is where I built the repeat and then on the left is what it would look like in an expanded version. So you can see where it or how it repeats. So like I said, this is not um, my usual art style. I don't you know, think it's horrible, but um, it was definitely done kind of quick and dirty, as they like to say. Um, so I think I can do something that's a little more delicate, a little more me, maybe even include watercolor, but I'm just so happy that at least I figured out the technical piece. And you know, it's not figuring out, I mean, I took a course, so it's not like I really taught myself. But um, yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. I actually decided that I was probably not going to go right into the watercolor but I also love the look of just kind of really delicate line work and so I wanted to continue to learn how to use Adobe Illustrator I wanted to practice with you know illustrations that were comparatively simple in comparison to very detailed watercolor where you're dealing with colors and textures and a lot more than just line works. It's been really fun to kind of play and experiment and go about things very differently than I usually would. So I have a bunch of different sketches now. I created these with multiple methods. My usual kind of method, which is, you know, sketching freehand from life or from imagination or from a bunch of reference photos. But I also did some tracing of some photographs I had taken and even did some scanning of some natural materials, which, um, well, is not actually on this one, but is on the, um, leaf, the leaf piece that I showed you before. And so, yeah, so I'm going to not do my usual because my next step, even though usually I don't do the tracing or anything like that, but once I have a sketch ready, then I transfer that to a watercolor paper and I get started with the painting. But I'm going to entirely skip that step, at least for now, and I'm going to just import these into Adobe Illustrator so that I can vectorize them. And then I'm going to just with the outlines, just with the sketches, try to see if I can come up with a pattern that I like. I have been reading that book, The Artist's Way, and I truly mean just reading. I haven't really been implementing the program, but the idea of taking myself on artist um, dates really did appeal to me and I think I need to kind of live and enjoy a life and not only paint because otherwise inspiration is going to dry up so that's what I wanted to show you here with that balance back in place with having gotten a little bit of fresh air it's back to the computer it's back to learning the art skills that i think are important so yep back in adobe illustrator and actually trying to create a pattern out of those sketches that i had created earlier in the video while I'm working away here, I'm wondering whether you are already pretty versed in Adobe Illustrator, whether you work in purely analog mediums such as watercolor, or what your medium of choice is when you create art. Please let me know in the comments. I just wanted to take one moment to show you you know, not everything that I want to share is the perfect final end result because that is not how learning works and that's not how art and creativity works. So I try to replicate the process that I did for the uh, leaf pattern. And so I built over here what I thought was the base of a simple repeat pattern with the sketches that I had made. And then on the left is where I'm trying to apply the pattern. And you can tell, I mean, wow. <laughs> 
I could not be more off. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board, do some troubleshooting, figure out what I did wrong over here. But yeah, I just wanted to show you, you know, what it's really like and not only the highlights, the success moments, but everything in between. And honestly, to me, this is also kind of fun because I figure if I've done it wrong and I can fix it, then I really know how to use it. So it's not bad to learn that as well. Yay, I got it to work. You have the little pattern design on the right and then on the left, what it would look like as a repeat, for example, on wrapping paper or something like that. But um, yeah, I'm not 100% happy with it yet, but I'm glad I was able to fix the mistake. And what that tells me is that I'm going to be working on this pattern a little more and then I'm going to try a few different color options and then tomorrow with a fresh brain I'm going to try to do this then with watercolor layers as well. All right so I was looking into this further because I tried a second version and I was getting lines in between and like it really wasn't working but I just found an error meaning that I am going to have to redo this <laughs> because the way that I've built it it cannot truly repeat and what I'll show you is over here something that I hadn't noticed but do you see how this just gets cut off and it happens everywhere where this piece appears. Yep, it's because I made a mistake. There's um, a few things you really have to pay attention to and I thought I was, but I missed it in one spot and now this is constantly being chopped off. So, well, <laughs> I thought I had successfully created a second pattern, but turns out I have not, which is totally fine. Um, just gotta keep practicing, so that's what I will be doing next. So let us open this quickly. It is by a little well, brand called Glückwerk by Jessica Müller. And what this is, is I wanted some really pretty little um, postmarks, what are they called? Brief, briefmarken, um, stamps, <laughs> little stamps to go, you know, in the scene as I'm working, showing my postcards, that kind of thing. And so these are the options, lots of different colors. And I'm really, really, oh, they're just so pretty. Yeah, I'm really, really happy that I got these because I think they will really help build a much cuter little scene. So yes, these are all Swiss postcards. And I think they are vintage, not entirely sure, but oh yeah, well here, 1966. That's definitely vintage, but apparently you can actually still use these, which is cool too. But at this point, at least, I'm not planning on using any of them other than to stage little photos. Oh my goodness, they're so precious. I love it. And it's very much the look that I'm going for with some of my artwork as well. So I think it just really works well. Those little botanical illustrations with different background colors. Oh, precious, precious. I think I'm in love. And then I got like more kind of additional Swiss themed ones with little mountains and the architecture here. I just absolutely love the different types of architecture in the different cantone. Um, oh, so, so pretty. I don't even, can you see this one? No, you can't even see this one at the top. Let me move things down for you a little more. Getting there. One sec here. Oh, isn't this just gorgeous? And then I got like little, um, you know, more like rose ones, which I think that's a very classic look as well that I love in illustrations. So 
I'm very, very happy with all my choices and I figure I can just use one or two as I'm photographing, setting a little scene for my postcards, for the notebooks that I'll be creating, for the stickers, you know, all this kind of stationary work, I think, you know, is enhanced in a little photo by adding some of these um, stamps. Ooh, there was one hidden, so cute. So this is by an artist that I follow on Instagram and she had a sale on her originals and I just really thought well you know here's another great thing that's gonna go on my gallery wall one day so let me show you are you ready wow isn't that just a stunning peony? You know, these are some of my favorite colors, those kind of pinks and maroons, and you see them all the time in my artwork. You see them a little bit in my brand color. I'm just really, really enamored by the colors, and I love these little lines, you know, the texture that's given to show kind of the leaf, and uh, I'm really happy with it. So I'll roll this back up until it can find a place on the gallery wall. And now here is the third piece of mail. You see I have opened it. I've actually had it for quite a few weeks, but I haven't shared it with you yet. So I'm going to do that right now. Look at how pretty all this is. So this is a little pack that came to accompany each of the different modules in the Bonnie Christine Immersion course. So you have a different little envelope for every one of the modules. You've seen I've opened these already for the first few, but yeah, I just think they are so incredibly beautiful. And what I really like is that you know, for anyone who asks what is surface design, I feel like, or surface pattern design, this is such a great thing to show. You know, this is the kind of work that is taught in the course. And so, you know, this I think makes it very tangible that you understand, okay, you're making these kind of patterns. And so what could they be used for? Yes, stationary, for wallpaper. You can use them for gift wrap. You can print this on fabric to make, you know, dresses out of pillows, out of whatever it could be, homeware. There's so many different applications and areas where surface designers are involved. But so yeah, I just thought this was so, so pretty. I wanted to share this with you, but I'm going to be real with you right now. And I'm not going to open them on camera and show you the content because, you know, I know as an artist, it, well, I don't know, but I can only imagine how much work it takes to come up with the course content. And so I don't feel like it's fair to just, you know, share all the content kind of open freely with people who have not decided to pay the artist, in this case, Bonnie Christine, to participate in the course. So I hope you're not too disappointed that I won't be showing you the contents of these. But it's safe to say that, you know, each week you get a little assistance, a little reminder, like something that will help you get through that week or that module of the course. I just, I just think they're so beautiful. I mean, it's great. And then some of them are to me more helpful than others so far, but there's definitely some that will be, you know, I think I'll be keeping permanently because they will be really helpful um, reminders as I'm working through these kind of workflows and learning Adobe Illustrator. If you enjoyed this studio vlog, I have a whole playlist full of them, which I'm going to link for you right here.